evening, Sacramento. This is Laura Rubal Caba with Soapbox Sacramento tonight. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking our sponsors, uh, Pieces Pizza down in Midtown on 21st Street, and uh, Humor Times, a monthly publication put out by James Israel here locally, locally that looks at political humor and cartoons that he edits and puts together. Tonight I am going to be talking about the upcoming utility rate increase coming to all City of Sacramento residents. Uh, this is something that is current right now and this Wednesday there will be a commission meeting in City Hall starting at 530 discussing that and it will be coming to the City Council uh, later this month or in early March. So um, first off I'm here with um, Velma and Elena from the Western Service Workers Association, which since 1973 has acted as a voice for low-income domestic workers and other low-paid service workers. And the WSWA is a self-help, free, voluntary membership association that operates independent of government funding. I'm also here with Eric Smith of Ion Sacramento, who has a great deal of information to give us about the utility rate increases. So I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Give us a, a basic background on what's going on with this issue, where we're at. Well, thank you, Laura. Um, it's always interesting that every time the Department of Utilities rolls out a rate hike, they hire a PR firm, Crocker & Crocker, whose slogan is lightning in a bottle, mm -hmm. to convince us that we need to pay more. And their slogan this time, your utilities, your community, um, is their slogan. And I think we could have saved money by just saying, pay more, get less. <laughs> so I'm heartened. And been more factual. Be more factual. I, I think um, given that they are our utilities, the city and the Department of Utilities should be upfront with us and factual. Um, I'm heartened that you mentioned the URAC meeting. Uh, they delayed. URAC? Uh, Utility Rate Advisory, Advisory Committee. Commission. Mm -hmm. And that's they, the meeting on Wednesday. On Wednesday. At 5.30 at City Hall. Correct. And so they are wrestling with this problem. And uh, unlike four years ago, when the rates went up 33 to 40%, uh, they're going to take a long, hard look at this, and we'd like to look at it, too. Part of the PR from the Department of Utility is fairness, reliability, and safety. And I'd like to focus on the safety, because the safety record at the Department of Utility is not very good currently. Uh, most people have heard the Channel 10 reports on carcinogens in our water, and I felt that the director's answers to those problems were marginal at best. Um, the city came out and defended their position and uh, said that they had not violated any EPA regulations. And given they, that, they actually always defend their position. Yes, so. they do. Given that they probably had their lawyers vet at all, I, I, I'm sure it's quite there, but it is not that upfront sharing of information with us. If you look at ionsacramento.org and our recent article uh, on the city utilities, you can see the chart that shows that they exceeded the EPA limits um, for trihalomethane, which is a carcinogen. The reason we point this out, Flint's been in the news quite a bit these days, and this is purely an error on the part of management um, with the Department of Utilities. There are other errors, leaks that have not been repaired at the zoo, gas leaks from digging up and replacing water lines in the street. Their subcontractors have hit several gas mains. We're not San Bruno yet, but we could be. No, we Scary. have a boiling water scare in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, we believe- A boiling water scare in the pocket? Yes. They set out a notice on a Sunday that they recommended boiling water for people in the pocket, that the water might not be safe to drink. And so it's reasonable to take action and be cautious. But in all probability, the Department of Utilities caused the problem themselves. We've had the meter problems of the past and the present. 
Uh, we have mains, et cetera, that are being moved from the backyard where they're low cost to the street where they're high cost. All of these are adding up to costs that those of us around the table who live in the city are going to have to pay. And we don't think that's fair, which is one of their lead items in uh, their campaign. We don't believe their safety record is reasonable. And we don't feel the management team is reliable at this time. There's been some problems, I think, with, um, with the meters that there's been sloppy work that's cost us a lot. There's been some expensive mistakes made by this Department of Utilities. Recurrent. Yes. Um, very recurrent. Um, there was a great audit done in 2008 on the meter issue, uh, but it's a little dated. It's time to look again. So I want to bring in my other two guests here from Western Service Workers Association to talk specifically about the work that they're doing with their communities, you know, and the impacts that this will have on so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you go ahead and start, Elena? Sure. Well, first of all, I'm a full-time volunteer organizer with Western Service Workers Association. Um, we've been here in Sacramento since 73. Our office is right off of Stockton Boulevard on, at 5040 Perry Avenue. And our members are low-income workers. We're here because we're, we want to say no to this water rate increase on any resident or small business customer. Right, right, right now, our, a lot of the people in Sacramento have been facing stagnant wages, not to mention an ever-increasing cost of everything from food to, to basic household supplies. A lot of people are in fixed incomes. Um, job security has never really been available to our population, but now job security is starting to be less and less available to a greater portion of the population. So our household budgets simply don't allow for any more increases right now. I mean, it would have to mean sacrificing maybe a little bit of your rent, um, proper health care, you'd have to forego food. I mean, it's, there's just not enough money to be able to afford um, any increase at all. And so our, again, our members are folks who do things like daycare service, they do in-home care, they do, they do food service, landscaping, things like that. Um, and the work that we focus on is really going door to door. We do door to door membership canvases in low income and working class communities or throughout the Sacramento region um, year round. And that's really the lifeblood of our organization because right after the canvas we'll do house meetings and we'll maintain contact with our members through phone calls and um, mailings and that's how we're able to keep an ear as to what are the needs in the community, what are people talking about. And right now certainly these rate increases have been you know, at the tip of everybody's tongue. <laughs> you know, I know um, we've talked to some members who have already had their rents go up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, my name is Elma Jantz, and I've been a member for five years. And I'm, uh, I've done domestic and service worker in my neighborhood for some time. I'm proud to be a member of the Western Service Organization Committee. I have, um, informal picket done formal and picket line I've testified before state hearing and I'm here today on behalf of the Sacramento Worker Benefit uh, Council to ask your viewers to join us in our demand for the safe affordable portable water as a right and not a privilege mem mem number of our um, members who rent and don't pay water bills I had their rent to go up. Uh, some in the uh, Elk Grove, Elder Creek areas had their um, rent to go up as high as 50 percent. Another member who had a water a renter said her landlord said it was too high for him to handle it so he was going to give it to her in order that she pay the bill. And uh, now we are all about saving resources in the low incomes of work as people. We use everything we can to recycle, to make a little extra money. We reuse furniture. Uh, we use reuse furniture. We reuse everything we can, we recycle to make a little extra money. Uh, re, we do uh, reuse furniture, we pay, pass down clothing. Now our government is asking us to, 
conserve water, giving up our quality of life, endangering our health. We need to be able to help our home, keep our homes clean, to bathe, to drink clean water, and uh, to keep the hydration. Um, I know of members who are older, who are disabled, that have open wounds that requires water for at least daily cleaning and redressing the wound, which takes more water for bathing someone who is, who is disabled or has been, uh, has a health problem. You bring up an interesting point there, I think, you know. You know, we've all heard it out, a fantastic job that we've done in conserving water. Mm -hmm. yes. And then turn around and slap us with some very serious increases. Can you tell us more about the, the numbers of those increases, Eric? Well, yes. And certainly the conservation has been fabulous. 28% mm -hmm. uh, for Sacramento reduction. And so that negates the need for pushing meters. A great deal of this increase uh, from the charts is part of the capital improvements, which is expediting meters, getting them in earlier than state law requires. Well, citizens of Sacramento are conserving as it is, so we can um, do without the meters until their legally required time in 2025. I'd like to piggyback on what you're talking about also in cost and compare the differences. Uh, over the last eight years, the consumer price index has gone up about one and a half percent a year. Over that time, the Sacramento average household income uh, net of inflation has dropped 12 percent. So really, Given that inflation has gone up 1.5% and income has dropped 12%, we've stayed just even hanging on. During that time, well, we know that this year there's going to be a 0% increase for Social Security recipients. Mm -hmm. And they're on a fixed income. And our president announced that federal workers were going to get 1.3% increases, which is in line with the cost of living index, which for 2015 was 0.7 percent, quite low. But this plan by the Department of Utilities calls for 4 percent increases in each of the next four years. Now, 4 percent increases are not common, and certainly they do not reflect the utility ratepayers base. So I think that the approach uh, on this is just out of line with reality in Sacramento and supporting our citizenry. It's not like I can choose to go and buy water somewhere else mm -hmm. or run my sewage somewhere else. Mm -hmm. All I can do is leave Sacramento and that's not right. Well, some of the really big issues that we have in Sacramento are affordable housing, mm -hmm. homelessness, and city council beats back an increase in the minimum wage, holds it down really low, doesn't do a good job with the affordable housing. They jiggled, jiggered around some of the numbers um, to, to, to save that affordable housing money, that, to save the money from development fees. So they made that kind of low, so it doesn't sound like they're making good funds for affordable housing. So they're shorting us on the other end, and then they have the audacity to turn around and do these humongous rate, rate increases. Th these are really big because you're looking at 40-something percent in four years, and the minimum wage is going to go up 50 percent, 50 cents, 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, in those four years, I think it'll go up a whole dollar from 10. So it'll go up 10 percent, and the water is going to go up 40 something percent. Forty-six percent uh, over four years for water. And those are people that maybe work minimum wage jobs, which aren't too many, but you have the people on fixed income who will not get anything like a 10 percent increase. No way. 
And you have people on SDI also in the same condition. Yes. So our problem here is that, you know, if a store raises its prices too high, mm -hmm. we shop somewhere else. Right. But the city has a monopoly. Um, if you don't pay your bill, bad things happen in a hurry. I have Real friends. <laughs> You've seen that, haven't yes. you? Um, not only are the fees uh, attached to their home, right. mm. uh, but they're extra fees on top of that. Right. It parallels the criminalization of being poor, mm -hmm. as we talk about in our society. So what we need from our city is for it to be our utilities, as their propaganda says, and for them to contain cost. In private industry, everybody turned off their cell phones here. Um, in private industry, if that was a Department of Utilities cell phone, it costs several thousand dollars. To turn it off? Well, just to buy it and use it, because their prices would continually escalate. But we know in consumer goods, which is very competitive, we can choose brands, mm -hmm. the cost continues to decline. That's because industries are containing costs. They're watching their salaries. They're watching their expenditures on meters. They're watching their contractors. And so they're managing costs. And managing costs is very difficult. It's a lot easier to just go and ask people to pay more. Well, in the private market, that doesn't work. Companies go out of business. We need our Department of Utilities to contain its costs. And I, so this is some, some mandated, mandated capital improvements that need to take place prior to 2025? Is that, how does, what's that yes. story? Yes, the, the state has mandated that water services be metered by 2025. Mm -hmm. In the interests of promoting conservation and other reasons, um, the city of Sacramento decided to accelerate that. So pay more earlier rather than lengthen it out. Raise rates earlier to get the meters in. This incurred debt. The most troubling part about this chart we showed earlier is the increasing debt in the future. Um, debt is not good for anybody okay. or any utility and so we're spending a lot of money now in the hopes of conserving in the future. We've already proven that we can conserve now. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. We're just being gouged and we're captive. Mm -hmm. Tell us some more about how it's going to affect the, the people that you work with. Sure. Elena. And I think we really need to, we need to move to call on our elected officials and everybody who has an oversight for providing safe water to, for there has to be a better way. I mean, mm -hmm. every time we talk about um, where the cost is, or where the expenses are going to come from, they always put it on low-income working people. And like you were talking about, the, the, it doesn't match up how much our, our income is going up with how much everything else is going up. We see it all the time. Right now, we're seeing people who get their electricity shut off. Just today, we were dealing with a household where they haven't had electricity for a month. You know, yeah. because she just recently became employed again. She had to take a car title loan out to pay her rent, which is 152 percent, I think, rate. Right? Wow. So, I mean, these are the situations that people are already in right now. So any increase is going to be even, even worse. So one of the things our membership leadership body has um, taken on is a letter writing campaign. So getting support from other people, small businesses, for example, professionals, students, people in the religious community, to demand that they don't raise the, the, the rates and that they find other ways to make, uh, to guarantee safe, affordable water to everybody. I think as a society, it's something that we need to do. And, and we're not alone. I mean, in 2010, the United Nations declared water as a human right. But this is a principle that is certainly not, we're not sticking to in the United States of America. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to keep it. And we have, um, I think you talked about this, homeowners are, are facing um, liens against their property if yes. they can't afford their, their bill. Mm -hmm. um, renters are being evicted because they can't afford the, the increased rent. Um, landlords have to pass mm -hmm. on the, the, 
the water bill to the renters, right? That's what um, Velma was talking mm -hmm. about. A lot of our members have been facing that already. In December, mm -hmm. um, a couple of our members had their rents go up. And then September of last year, the, the UN General Assembly ratified these new 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. And goal number six is ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. And again, I think we need to start, we need to demand <coughs> that our local and state governments really look at how they're going to they're gonna do that. I mean, it's a, it's a lack of political will at this point because we have the science, we have the technology to do so many other things. I mean, it's incredible, but we can't figure out how to get water to the majority of people, safe, affordable water. And I mean, we look at what's happened in, um, what's happening in, in, in Detroit or all the water shutoffs in Detroit and the public health disaster in Flint, Michigan, um, because they were trying to cut costs on water supplies and then they ended up poisoning their population. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to look that far. Here in the state of California, in San Diego, they had 24,000 households get their water shut off in 2014 because they couldn't afford the bill. Wow. You know, whole towns in San Joaquin Valley can't afford water either. And again, we know there has to be a better way. We don't want that to happen. Well, anywhere, you know, and we don't want it to happen in Sacramento. I mean, this is our, this is our home. And then we contrast, this is something we've had on this show a couple of times, is the story of Nestle. That yes. Nestle gets this, this water exactly. contract mm -hmm. that seems to be pretty much a gift, mm -hmm. a gift from the city to them to bottle that water and, and sell it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like our city is far too supportive of businesses over the people that need to live in this city and need to be able to survive. And they can't deal with the homeless we have now, and yet mm -hmm. raising the water rates will cause people yes. to lose their housing. That will happen. Mm -hmm. they, and so not only is city council not dealing with the homeless, they are creating more, more homeless. homeless yes. In our future, more unaffordable housing. They, they don't seem to understand the effects of their decisions. They seem to be kind of blissfully unaware of the realities, they're out of touch. The same problems that we see in Washington, I think we're starting to see right here at the city council level, and it's sad to see that at a local level, that they just don't hear yeah. the people. They, they live some other, they don't understand. How can you not understand that people on fixed incomes cannot afford increases in their rents? How can right. you not understand that? It's, it, it really doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. <laughs> no, it <laughs> doesn't. Just push that little button. <laughs> well, unfortunately, cost mm -hmm. containment is very difficult. It takes determined management. Mm -hmm. It takes leadership. And you could look at the repricing of Nestle water too. Right. Yeah. We it could look at many will. things. Yeah. It takes the political mm -hmm. will. Yeah. But it's very difficult. Yeah. And. You know, I've always said in good times, anybody can manage an organization. Right. In tough times, very few can manage an organization. So we need people who are committed to making sure that the future, you know, I told my wife, you know, we can afford the water now, but long after I'm gone, since women live longer than men, she's going to have a tough time paying her bill. And that is not a good trajectory for our society. So I'd like to uh, go to Prop 218 and talk about some of the technicalities. Um, hopefully all of your viewers know that if they write in and oppose the rate increase and 50% plus one person opposes the rate increase, the rate increase is stopped. That's under Prop 18. So if they write into city council? Write into the utility, right list their um, bill number or their property number so they're identified as a rate payer. It's for people who own homes and pay rates and renters who pay the rate directly um, rather than the landlord. Um, for landlords they would have to send it in but unfortunately out of like 183,000 rate payers at the last meeting 381 had written in. So we're a little behind the curve. But I think it would make a huge effect on the political will if they received many, many letters. 
Okay, so I, I have a house and I'm a landlord at another house, but I pay the water bill there. So I would write two letters? Correct. And so this sounds like a really good strategy. I mean, like, we don't even have to convince City Hall. No. All we have to do is get our neighbors to write letters, write off of their utility bills, straight in. Yes. And how many do we need? <laughs> Hold it. Quite a few. So we need 50% of the ratepayers, oh. and there are 180 to 190,000 ratepayers um, in the city. Uh, so that's 80 to 90,000. It's not not 50% of the people who write in, yeah. <laughs> which is what I was hoping it was. It's 50% of the total. So that's going to that's going to require a huge effort. Mm -hmm. It, it's a huge effort and it's a, a legal definition in Prop 218, uh, which, you know, was to address um, bad practices of the past. And which so, continue. Which continue. And it's not a simple remedy, um, but I would think 20,000 letters would have a big impact on sure. the political will at City Hall. We, we definitely need to move on that. And we don't have a lot of time because this is no. going to go before City Council in the, next, um, in the next two or three weeks. I've, I've heard early March. That sounds really quick. We've only got like one minute left, so we're going to have to kind of wrap up. Is there mm -hmm. any last thing that you'd like to say, Elena? Well, absolutely. And I think having people show up to those uh, commission hearings and certainly having that voice there is very important. So Wednesday night, 5.30, <laughs> City Hall, this Wednesday. I will tell you, I was very impressed with the Utility Rate Advisory Commission. They listened to the people who were there um, two weeks ago, a week ago, and they took a pause. Mm -hmm. So it does work. Show up. And we need another things, pause. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that we're going strong on is our door-to-door -door membership canvases that I was mentioning earlier because that's really where we meet the people who are going to be affected most adversely and are oftentimes the least involved because, you know, they're busy hustling to pay the rent and hustling to pay the already expensive bills. So that's, I invite the viewers to join us on that. That'll be good. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good thing to talk about. I hope my viewers really appreciate it. I know I'm writing my letters. Yeah. Very good. Those out. <laughs>